Hey, everybody, this is a couple of minutes before we're going to start. Uh, welcome to TechSoup's uh, quad event. This is uh, QuickBooks AMA with Greg Boston. I'm Greg Boston. We're actually not starting yet. We're going to start in a couple of minutes. Um, I want you to find the chat for me if you could. Right now we have 88 people in the room. Um, find the chat. And in the chat, I'd like for you to tell me your favorite pizza topping. And if you don't like pizza, I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, uh, <laughs> and while you are telling me your favorite pizza topping, find the chat. It's important that you do that so I know you know where the chat is. Uh, please enjoy the music. And we will start in probably two minutes. Looking out on the morning rain I used to feel so uninspired Another day, Lord, it made me feel so tired. Before the day I met you, I was so unkind. You're the key to my peace of mind. Was you? We're going to start in about 50 seconds. Those of you who are just joining us, we're listening to some music. I want you to find the chat. Tell me what your favorite pizza topping is in the chat. We've got 185 people in the room. I didn't know just what was wrong with me Till your kiss helped me name Best of pizzas on the list. That was it, and I will turn it over to the wonderful people at TechSoup to get us started. <laughs> Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, really appreciated the intro, and uh, I saw some fantastic questions or responses flooding into chat. And I am definitely very interested in trying some of these different pizza. Did topics. you see the the person that just said fruit? Not no. even like pineapple. Someone just said random fruit. I'm like, really? But. I I, Ronald, I <laughs> Ronald did that. Steak and mushrooms, <laughs> Kathy, sounds amazing. But all right. I'm also very curious about the peaches. But yes. at any event, um, <laughs> everybody, welcome to today's session. Um, this is an open to the public quad event uh, featuring, featuring a Ask Me Anything component related to QuickBooks. Um, and we are delighted to have our expert, Greg Boston, here today to join us. Um, and we we're going to introduce quad a little bit and also talk through um, Greg and ask him to introduce himself in a second, but just a couple of quick housekeeping things. Um, if you have questions, please use the Q&A feature right down there. Uh, it should be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you have questions or would like to check in with us about anything or think about um, another pizza topping, please do not please do not hesitate to use the chat. Um, also, um, check your inbox. Um, after the session, we'll be emailing you a replay and the slides, and you, so you should have all the resource links in your inbox in a couple of weeks. And also, um, if you're learning something cool during today's session, don't hesitate to post on social media. Um, we appreciate that use of the hashtag TechSoupQuad, um, and also tagging TechSoup. We'd love to hear what you're learning, uh, both in today's session and then outside of today's session. And then lastly, a reminder that closed captioning is available uh, via Zoom. You can click on the uh, CC button located in your Zoom menu if that's helpful for you. Um, so those are the quick housekeeping items. Um, I also wanted to do a quick introduction to TechSoup. Um, TechSoup is a global nonprofit. Uh, we believe strongly that technologies, tools, and solutions can help make the world a better place. And we can talk a little bit about that more later. Um, and we'd like to talk a little bit about our program, Quad. 
And for that, I'm going to hand it over to Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron thanks, Catherine. Hey, everybody. Uh, Quad is our new subscription membership uh, that uh, we have provided. Uh, let's see, it includes a set of features that will benefit your organization as you scale for growth. Uh, these features include a unique community space uh, that includes uh, gated and members-only content. Uh, we also have reduced admin fees on products and courses and services, and we have member support through me. Uh, do you guys mind if I go to the Quad space right now? And yeah, go ahead. Really quickly. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Let's see. It says I cannot share. My you screen have to. He's just got to upgrade you. Somebody could upgrade Aaron so he can share his screen. I can Let's stop see. my share too, if that'll help. Oh, awesome! Yeah, here we go. Okay, wait. Okay, do you see the community space at the moment? Yes. Awesome. Okay, so here we are. So within the community space, as part of the features. Uh, we have conversations and engagement in the middle. Um, uh, what we do is not only does TechSoup post in here, but we encourage members to post as well. So you get peer engagement, peer presentations and interactions. Um, we post a bunch of really deep, rich, detailed articles and content. Again, it's members only. Our digital content team is busily every day putting something in here around technology and related needs around fundraising, um, um, AI, ChatGPT, Microsoft 365. Uh, we have uh, roundups each week. So if you miss some article, you can get sort of a snapshot here. My colleague Kate uh, was kind enough to post this fantastic detailed article about what we've been posting in here. Uh, a lot of topics around upcoming events as well around the world. Um, we have not only the conversations in the middle, but we have kind of the trending posts and upcoming events to the right as well as the content all to the left. We have uh, bi-weekly office hours within the community space. So if you have any uh, lingering tech issues and questions that you need answered, you can always jump in every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. This event right now is a member, technically a members only event uh, within Quad, but we've opened it up to the larger audience to get everybody uh, a little taste of what Quad is. So we have these and we also have, uh, again, a lot of in-depth articles uh, you yourself can post in here. You can present in here. If maybe you have a holiday fundraiser you want to talk about or let everybody know, you can do that as well. So we have a lot of fantastic features. Um, I'm going to go back to the uh, slide deck really quickly and show you what else there is on a quad. So we built out this community space. Uh, this is a column here. Um, that includes curated knowledge, uh, curated the knowledge base uh, and member engagement. But also uh, with Quad, you get uh, discounts on products, courses, and services. So we remove the admin fees on all products. So if you have te a tech plan and needs for the following year, you can really, really make out uh, great regarding cost savings. We also do, we remove the admin fees on all the courses. So if you have staff and they need to train, you need to raise the skill set of your staff around uh, all the courses we have. We have courses around Adobe, um, AI, grant writing, um, Microsoft 365 bundles. We have a lot of stuff in there that, again, the race is skill set of staff. You can have 10 staff do uh, courses. You can add 10 staff within the community space. Uh, the cost is $200 uh, a year. We base that off of the average annual spend of our members. So again, really conscientious around cost. Uh, and then there's individualized support, and that's through me. So we have an assessment call. I understand what your needs are for the year, and I can help help you through the course of the year. Uh, I can place your requests. I can get you some answers to uh, your tech questions. And I would encourage you to use the space as a resource hub as well. Jump in there, ask questions around technology, get to know your, your colleagues who may share the same type of uh, programs that you have. Uh, so we're looking really looking forward to people to get to know Quad more and uh, understand the benefits. Most people know us for our uh, product donation program. Oftentimes you might get a product, but you may not actually know how to use it. So uh, this is a way to provide wraparound support to get what you uh, the knowledge you need to learn how to excel and use that product as well. Um, again, reduced admin fees on all product, products and courses. You can get QuickBooks made easy for probably half the cost. You can get QuickBooks uh, with removed admin fees, $75 or $160, depending on your need and your eligibility as well. So a lot of really good stuff. Um, 
and just examples these these are four donated products admin fees that would be 307 dollars removed uh, courses tech planning courses excel 101 201 and 301 uh, google analytics and more and yeah that is a little briefer on quad we hope you join i'll put a link in the uh, chat uh, to, if you want to meet with me to talk about it as well as a link to the product pages as, as well all right that's it for me i'm going to stop sharing and let you guys get back to what you want to hear about. Cool. All right. And so um, are you should be seeing um, my screen now, hopefully. Uh, am I, are you seeing? Yeah, you should be seeing the thing that says Greg Expert. So is that right? Okay, cool. All right, cool. So um, I am uh, Greg Bossom, uh, and I am a CPA uh, that specializes in nonprofit organizations. Uh, we do, I don't know, over, um, I don't know, we probably teach four or 5,000 nonprofits a year um, with my uh, QuickBooks Made Easy company. But I also have an accounting firm where we do 990s and we do audits of around 35 nonprofits a year. We have bookkeeping that we do. Uh, uh, but the main thing uh, that I, it, what brings me to TechSoup is the training through uh, my uh, company, QuickBooks Made Easy. And all QuickBooks Made Easy does is teach people how to use, I mean, teach people how to use QuickBooks that are in the nonprofit world, okay? Uh, and we have all kinds of webinars. Some of them are free, some of them cost. Uh, we have uh, tech support that you can sign up for. We have other, all kinds of nonprofit services that we offer. Uh, one of them is a service that is offered through TechSoup that will help you migrate from QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online. Um, we have a file setup service. We have a checkup. Um, and then, of course, uh, in addition to these nonprofit services, we have training. Uh, now, we have uh, webinars, a three-day training that's coming up. Uh, and it's coming up on October the 31st, uh, the first and second for desktop users, and then the following week for online users. But we'll talk about that more um, in a second. Uh, so that's kind of me uh, and who I am. Uh, and this is what you need to do to make the screen bigger. I want to spend most of the time that we have here just answering questions, because that's what you're here for. So I don't want to do too much more with all this other stuff. Um, I will say that we're going to give you $40 off coming uh, to come to our three-day uh, training webinar. Uh, it's two and a half hours a day for three days. And the code is QUAD40, Q-U-A-D 40. Q -U -A -D 40. Um, you're only getting it because you're here today. Uh, no one else is getting this. But uh, anyway, uh, we'll talk more about the three-day webinar series. You got to see whether or not I'm any good at teaching. Uh, I do want to... Uh, put in a couple of polls here. So I'm going to launch this poll here. We've got almost 300 people in the room. Uh, I want to know if you've ever seen me teach before. Uh, if you've ever seen me teach a webinar or teach um, a seminar, I know a number of you have probably seen me on YouTube. I just don't know if anybody of you actually seen me uh, teach live. So this is very cool here. So we've got, uh, it looks like uh, seven, over 70% of you have not seen me teach before. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm not your usual teacher. Okay. <laughs> I can promise you that. All right. Uh, but you'll see how this goes. So, um, uh, what I want to do now is I want to, well, you tell me, uh, uh, who is I, uh, cause am I talking the whole time or are you guys talking to me, Aaron or Andrew? How are we going to do this? Uh, Catherine will be Catherine? Um, asking you the questions. Yep. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we've had a number of you have, you had the chance to give us some questions ahead of time. So we looked through that and we came up with some questions that we think most of you are going to want to know based on what the feedback we've got. So we'll spend about 20 minutes on those questions. Um, and then after that, We'll just dive into whatever else you want to know about QuickBooks. Uh, but before we even go there, there is something that I want to cover. So I'm going to start teaching right now. Um, the thing that I want to talk about is the future of QuickBooks. All right. <laughs> so basically, if you uh, are... Uh, 
If you know about this, then you've probably been thinking about it. But if you don't, then let me just tell you, uh, there are two types of QuickBooks, basically. There's QuickBooks Online and there's QuickBooks Desktop. And QuickBooks uh, Desktop is the original version, and it's been around forever. Uh, and it looks like this, okay? It looks like that, okay? Whereas QuickBooks Online is cloud-based. And QuickBooks Online looks completely different. QuickBooks Online looks like this. And you remote in to get to it, okay? It's great because you can get to it whenever and wherever you want, but it's tough uh, because it's a completely different piece of software. So if you're using this one and somebody tells you that you need to go to this one, you're going to freak out, okay? Which is one of the reasons why every time I teach a webinar, I do it both ways. But I am curious to see what you guys are using. So if you can answer the poll now, I want to know what you're using. Are you using QuickBooks Desktop, which is, uh, whoops, which is this one? Or are you using QuickBooks Online, which is this one? Or are you using both or are you using neither? Okay. So, uh, I'm going to give it another second here, and then I'm going to uh, end the poll, and then I'm going to talk to you about whether or not you should be using QuickBooks Desktop or the online edition. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and share the result, and you will see that 60% of you are exclusively lose using QuickBooks Online. There's 25% of you that are using Desktop, okay? So there's 285 people here. 65 of you are using QuickBooks Desktop. So. Um, this is typically what I'm seeing in the market right now. It's usually kind of like a two-thirds online, a one-third desktop, and it's going down, down, down. And uh, people that are using QuickBooks desktop, they don't want to change because they don't want to have to learn anything new, right? Um, it used to be that people didn't want to change because they thought that QuickBooks online wasn't near as good as QuickBooks desktop, but that's not true anymore, okay? Okay. So um, I'm going to have, I have a couple of slides here to kind of help us see what the difference is. But before I even do that, the answer as to whether or not you should be in QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online going forward, the answer is real easy. You should be in QuickBooks Online, okay? Now, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, I don't make any money off of saying that. I'm just telling you. That's why, that's what the dealio is. All of you that are still in QuickBooks Desktop, you're going to need to move to QuickBooks Online eventually. It's just a matter of time. So you should probably go ahead and just bite the bullet and do it. Now, why do I say everybody should be in QuickBooks Online? And that is because, in my opinion, QuickBooks Desktop is going bye-bye, okay? It's my opinion, okay? But I'm always right, but nevertheless. Uh, honestly, though, QuickBooks Desktop is going bye-bye, in my opinion. It's already gone in the UK, all right? Completely gone. And uh, TechSoup, if you go to the TechSoup website uh, and you want to buy QuickBooks, which is absolutely where you need to buy QuickBooks from TechSoup, you will notice that you can still buy QuickBooks desktop from TechSoup, but you can only buy it for 2021. They're not offering 2022. They're not offering 2023. And I don't work for TechSoup, but my guess is in 2024, this will probably disappear altogether. So the only option you'll have is going to be QuickBooks Online. So that's why I think it's probably the best option for you to use QuickBooks Online rather than QuickBooks Desktop. So uh, having said that, um, I gave you a chart to kind of talk about what the difference is between QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Desktop. Now, by the way, QuickBooks Online, there are two versions available at TechSoup. One of them is called Advanced and one of them is called Plus, okay? You want Advanced, period, okay? It's $160 a year as opposed to $75 a year. So it's only, what is that, $85 more a year? The reason why you want advanced is because advanced allows you to back up your data file. There's a backup service that's free. You have to turn it on. I have a little video on that in my uh, uh, YouTube page, but you have to turn it on to get it to work. And then your QuickBooks Online file 
will be backed up every five minutes so that if you screw your books up and you want to go back to what it was before you screwed it up, you'll be able to. If you have QuickBooks Plus, you won't be able to do that. So, and it's again, only $85. But anyway, so you want QuickBooks um, Online Advanced. So this is why I'm comparing QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online Advanced, because this is the one that you want to get, okay? So uh, let's see, number of users in at the same time. With QuickBooks Desktop, you have to pay extra money for each user that's in the program at the same time. In other words, you're in one room and somebody else is in another room. That's how it is in QuickBooks Desktop. In QuickBooks Online, 25 people can be in at the same time, all right? Uh, number of company files. It's true that QuickBooks Desktop was kind of nice for accountants because we have a lot of different clients and we could just needed one program for QuickBooks Desktop and we could use it for all of our clients. With online, each one of our clients has to have a license, okay? One license for one data file. But the beautiful part is it only costs $160 a year to get it and you simply get it, all right? Uh, the reporting, this is something that people used to use as an excuse for not moving to QuickBooks Online. That's not true anymore. The reporting is just as good um, as it is in desktop with a few minor exceptions. Um, bank feeds. This is the best part of moving to QuickBooks Online is that uh, bank, free, bank feeds allow you to download your debit card and credit card transactions very easily. Uh, they sit in a waiting room and then you add them to your QuickBooks file. I'm going to show you how that works, uh, but it's a free service. Uh, whereas with the Premier Desktop, it's more manual and it usually costs money. Um, whereas it's free and automatic with QuickBooks Online Advanced. I realize it sounds like I'm trying to sell you on something. I don't make any money from this. I'm just being honest with you. Okay. So, uh, all right. Uh, one thing um, about donor thank you letters, if you want to get a donor thank you letter out of QuickBooks Desktop, there's a way you can kind of make it happen within the program. In QuickBooks Online, you have to use an outside app. Um, payroll in QuickBooks, it's actually better in QuickBooks Desktop than it is in QuickBooks Online uh, because you can't split payroll between grants or between programs in QuickBooks Online like you can with desktop. But other than that, QuickBooks Online is the better option. And again, if you want to stick with QuickBooks Desktop, you won't be getting it from TechSoup. You'll be getting it at $799 a year from Intuit, okay? Whereas QuickBooks Online, it's $160 per year. So it's cheaper. But anyway, all right. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about that. This is another more detailed chart of the differences between the two, just so that you have it. Um, and you'll get this deck afterwards. So I'm going to stop for a second. And then Catherine, I mean, you want to throw some questions at me about what I've covered so far before we get into specifics about what to do. Yes. In QuickBooks. Sure. Let me see if I can pick up some quick questions. About setup. One second here. Just about the different. Okay, Karen, I'm seeing here. Ah. Please explain how the reports are better. So the reports, I will show you this. So I, I still think that ultimately the reports are a tiny bit better in desktop than they are in QuickBooks Online. And the reason why, I needed to say this anyway, Catherine. Uh, the reason why is when you go, I, I didn't even practice this. I should have picked a report where it would work. Um, here's a, a sales by customer summary in QuickBooks. If I customize this report and I go to the filters tab, I'm going to be able to filter for all sorts of fields. So say I just want my customers that have a particular customer type, like just my restricted grants, and I click OK, and it filters them just for the restricted grants. That's one thing that isn't as good in QuickBooks Online. In QuickBooks Online, when I go to filter for that same report, uh, and I'm going to go in here to, where is it? Um, it's a, here's a sales by customer summary report. I've got to make the date range big here. 
the way that you customize in QuickBooks Online, you click customize, but when you go to filter, you can't filter by customer type. There's not near as many things to filter by. So you run into some limitations when you're trying to create your own customized reports. All right. Um, so, and Leanne uh, says, maybe I misunderstood. Are you saying you cannot split payroll over grants in online? You can split them manually by doing journal entries. Whereas in QuickBooks Desktop, when you do payroll through the payroll service, in QuickBooks Desktop, when you go to pay employees, you can actually split individual paychecks between grants. You can't do that in QuickBooks Online. But if you're not using QuickBooks Payroll anyway, then it's irrelevant, okay? It's only if you were using QuickBooks Desktop Payroll, all right? All right, I'll shut up, Catherine. Talk to me. No worries. This is fantastic. Um, I did have another question I wanted to pass your way related to um, the two different options here. And is, um, would you advise against migrating to QuickBooks Online mid fiscal year? So um, I actually don't think it matters. Um, uh, if you, where are we now? We're in September. So uh I, I would pick a time of year that you have the space to work on it, all right? Because what we're going to do is when you migrate to QuickBooks Online, it takes all your desktop information and it moves it up to QBO. So uh, you'll still have your QuickBooks desktop program and you can just keep on trucking in QBO. I don't, and there's good, there's going to be a learning curve though. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather focus on, do I have time to learn it? Because if I'm year in December 31 and somebody says, oh, well, I'll just start next year. Well, what if you have this giant conference in January and February? Maybe that's not a good time to change. So I wouldn't let middle of the year uh, be a problem for you. It's more about when you have the time to actually do it. Okay. Great. What Thank else? You. Sure. So let me pivot a little bit to some other, some slightly more uh, detailed questions. If okay. That's okay. Okay. So we have a so, and these questions are coming from uh, folks within our quad community. So okay. the first one comes from Melissa mm -hmm. um, and she says, um, I run a food pantry and have several businesses and individuals who do, who donate food, cleaning products, equipment, et cetera. Some goes directly to my clients, such as the donation um, that we use right now at the pantry and some we pass on to other nonprofits. I have no idea how to account for these as income um, if it isn't really income. So it is it is income. Okay. It okay. is. It's okay. called an in-kind contribution. Okay. And because if that person didn't give you that stuff, you would have to, Melissa, turn around and buy it. Okay. Now you may say to me, well, I wouldn't buy it then. Well, nevertheless. Somebody gave you a thing that you turned around and either used internally or gave to somebody else. You got income and you got expense. You got a donation in and you incurred an expense when you gave it out. Okay. So the way to handle that in your specific example is in kind, it's an in-kind gift. So what I want you to do, and I'm telling everybody because there was more than one question about in-kind contributions, mm -hmm. um, but if you go to the chart of accounts list, and I'm in the online edition, um, but it would be the same in the desktop version. Uh, let's see where I put these things. Um, I must have put it in a different data file. Let me get back to my other data file here. Uh, sorry. Ah, You want to ask me a question while I'm getting back to my other data file? <laughs> sure here's another one <laughs> this one comes from jackie um i am struggling with integrating donor perfect with quickbooks how do wow. i integrate them okay all right so um donor perfect so i will tell you that in a second here is what i want every single person listening to me i need three income accounts one called in-kind contributions it's an income account Another that's a sub under it called in-kind goods and another called in-kind services and rent. The reason why we're separating this, well, you tell me, does anybody know? Put it in the chat. Anyone know why I want in-kind goods separated from services and rent? Put it in the chat. I'm just kind of curious to see if anybody knows. 
I'll give you like five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. It's on the 990. Karen won. Uh, 990s report goods. They don't report services and rent. So they're on the 990 as donations of goods, but the services and rent aren't, which is why I need to keep them separate. And then in order to enter your stuff, Melissa, what you're going to do is you're going to do a journal entry. I know journal entries are kind of obnoxious. Um, I think I have one memorized here that I will show you. Uh, and let me just edit this so I can... There it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to record an entry and I don't care whether they gave it to the person directly and they never, you never even had it in your hands. It's irrelevant. Okay. You're going to make income go up. That means you credit it. And then you're going to expense. The other side of it will go to the expense account. Now, if you were giving it to somebody else, then you would have like gifts to other organizations or uh, gifts to the community or some sort of an expense account like that. And you debit that. Um, Julia says, I want to see it in the desktop version. You don't really need to, because it's a journal entry, just like it is in the online edition. Maybe you just don't know where to go for journal entries. You go to company and you go to make journal entry, and then you do the same entry here. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, that's the in kind. Um, that's the in kind contribution. The person who asked me about um, Donor Perfect, she wants to know how to integrate Donor Perfect, Catherine. Okay, that's correct. So I'm going to tell you, give it up. Okay, <laughs> it's a nightmare. I've actually never in 30 years run across a person who is able to get Donor Perfect to integrate successfully. I'm not even kidding. And I and, and listen, I'm not saying Donor Perfect is a bad software. I am saying that the integration is not great. There are three softwares out there that integrate really well with QuickBooks Online. Um, one of them is Little Green Light, which you can get on TechSoup. Uh, one of them is Bloomerang, and one of them is Neon One. And those are the three that I'm currently recommending. All right. Um, if you have QuickBooks Desktop. I don't think you can integrate anything well with QuickBooks Desktop. So, all right, Catherine. Okay. What else you got? Next up, mm -hmm. uh, how should I record ticket sales revenue from an event that is not a fundraiser? Right. It's part of a programmatic area. I'm thinking about classes. So, um, if you when you enter your um, uh, you know, this is actually a good time to go ahead and show this other piece I wanted you to see. Um, I'm going to answer the question, but I'm going to teach too. So this is for all of you that are brand new. So when you enter expenses and income, there are three things that you need to tell QuickBooks beyond your standard, what the dollar amount is and who you paid or whatever. There are three things that you need to be tracking. One of them is the natural category, okay? And by natural category, I mean just the natural way of thinking about an income account and an expense account. A natural category of expense would be salaries, travel, rent, supplies. These are just natural ways of thinking about expenses. And for income, it would be the natural way of thinking about it. You said the words ticket sales, you need an income account called ticket sales, okay? So that's where I would point it, okay? So individual donations, salaries and wages, rent expense, postage. But in addition to this natural category, which is what you need for ticket sales, there's a second thing you need to track. And the second thing you need to track is the function, the function of the transaction. In other words, the why of the transaction. Mm -hmm. And funders want to know, that your expenses go more for function one than they do function two or function three. There's three functions, three functional areas in accounting for nonprofits. And funders want to know you're spending most of your money on the first one rather than the second two. In uh, the chat, tell me what you think those three functional areas are in uh, nonprofit accounting. You, somebody put it in the chat. Somebody will get it. What are those three main areas? Program, admin, fundraising. Love you. Unless you're a house of worship, you don't have to do that. But 
everybody else does. Just to kind of prove to you that everybody else does, on the 990, when you enter your expenses, you have to point them not only to the natural category, which are what these rows are, like legal, accounting, payroll taxes, salaries and wages, but there's a program, a management, and a fundraising column, okay? So that's what you're supposed to use the classes for. So you'll, so you'll have a class for each one of your programs. Now you have an event, Melissa, if it's a huge event, like an annual conference, then I would make a class for it. If I need to see a PL for the event, I would probably make a class for it. But that doesn't mean that you also shouldn't have ticket sales. Remember, two things there, natural category and program. See, every time you enter a transaction, We'll do it in the desktop here for a second longer. Uh, write a check. You got to put the natural category, which is right here. Okay. And you have to put the class, which is over here. And then, yes, you can take certain transactions and split them between different programs or program admin and fundraising. So that's the second thing you need to track. The third thing you need to track is who paid for it. What grant, what funding source did it come out of, all right? And this is only really relevant for people that have restricted grants. If you have grants, who has restricted grants? Put it in the web chat. Who has restricted grants? Put it in there. Give me yes. We all do, right? Tons of us do. Don't we want to know so that we can report to the funder how we spent the money? Well, that's what this little third thing is for right here under customer job right there. So I can put the grant that paid for it like that. And some of it isn't paid for out of a grant, or maybe it's paid for out of a different grant. So I'm just going to try and hammer this home. Natural category, the grant, the program. Okay. So when you do that, then you can very easily look at what I can get here. I can get a, uh, let's go back to where my reports are. Uh, let's see, I can get a p and L. I can get a p and L that is just a total p and L. Okay, just a standard p and L, but I can also get it by class. And so then I can see exactly how much money each one of my programs is costing me, how much I'm spending on admin, how much I'm spending on fundraising. But in order to do this, every transaction, got to say the name of the income or the expense account, and also got to put what class it goes to. And yes, you can also get a PL for a grant. All right. All right. I will shut up. That was the only other main thing, Catherine, that I wanted to make sure everybody got. And we still got 25 minutes. So I am all ears. Excellent. Uh, so just ask away. <laughs> All right. So next up, what would be best practice for tracking credit card rewards, either as points or as gift card balance redemption, that is then eventually used for internal purchases? Ah, okay. It's interesting. So I'm going to start by saying, um, gosh, that's such a little amount of money. Why are you worried about it? Having said that, <laughs> then what I will say is, when you get a credit card reward, it's like an asset that you'll be able to use. So what I would do is I would go into the chart of accounts list and I would need to create two accounts. I would need to create an income account to record the credit card rewards, make it an income account. Um, and I'll just call it nonprofit income and I'll just call it credit card. Oh, good Lord. Ah. Ah, lay. I'll just do that. I'm having some real problems here. Okay, so that would be like an income account. And then it's an asset that you could use. So I would probably, if you wanted to do this, I think it's overkill. But if you wanted to do it, uh, then you would create an account that's an asset account. It's a current asset. So I'd put it under current asset. 
And then um, I would just, um, the tax form selection, this is kind of irrelevant. Whatever you put here doesn't really matter in this selection here. But then I would put um, credit card rewards to be used. Um, and then I would do an entry to create that. So I'm going to do a journal entry. And the journal entry is credit card rewards to be used. That's the asset because it's something of value that you got, $125. And then credit card rewards I would make as an income account. So that's probably how I would do that. And I do realize that a number of you may not be like the best at figuring out when to debit and credit something. So uh, I'm going to uh, take you to, let's see where this is. Um, hold on. I want to, and we need to give this to them, Bill, when it's, when it's done, but I'm going to show them my little thing on when to debit and credit stuff. Uh, here she is. So this is pregnant Alice. So she is pregnant. It's Alice. She's pregnant. So to make an account go up, if it's an asset or an expense, you debit it. To make an account go up, if it's not an asset or an expense, if it's a liability, income, or this is really your equity account, you'll credit it. And then to make it go down, you'll do the opposite. Okay. So um, uh, you said it was too small. What is the way to not set this up and still use the rewards? Honestly, I mean, I thought the rewards are like 20 or 30 bucks. I would just blow it off. And whenever you use it and you buy something for $80 and it's only $60, I would just say I spent $60 on it. That's me. Um, all right. Uh, what else you got? Catherine, back yeah. to you. Excellent. So a uh, question um, from Irene. Um, when someone pays for a program, that person is not a donor. Uh, but I can't find a way to set that person up aside from a donor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a problem. It's kind of a problem. And it's a problem in desktop and online. Um, all of the people that give you your money, they are in the same list in Quickity Books. Okay. And that is your customer list. Okay. Period. Now, some people say, well, gosh, I wish there was a way I could split and say this person's a customer and this person's a donor. But if you think about it, if you think about it, there are people that are both, okay? They buy something from you, but they also donate money and you don't want them in here twice, okay? So the way to call out your donors from your members is when you run a report. So you just have one name in here and then I can run a report. Let's run a, um, I'm going to go to standard and I'm going to run a, let's see where it is, uh, a sales by customer report, or actually I'll just do an income by customer. So this is all my income that I got. I'll just make it all periods, all dates. And so then what I, what I can do is if I click on customize, I can filter it, okay, um, so that, oh, well, you know what? That's interesting. It doesn't let me filter this particular report, so I have to go to a different report. See, this is what is so sometimes tough with QuickBooks Online. Um, I will go to a, where was that other one? Here, sales by customer. Okay, so this gives me all of my sales. But what you do is you filter the report based on the income account or the product and service. And you say, please just give me individual contributions. And then what it does is it filters down the report. The name might still be there, but only the donations that they got would be there. So there is something in QuickBooks Online uh, that's called customer type right there. So when you... Uh, I'll just edit this customer. You can put in a customer type, but you can't filter for it in QuickBooks Online. So I don't think it's very helpful. And I also don't think that you would want to use it anyway, because again, you might want to have the customer 
uh, is sometimes a customer and sometimes a donor. All right. So that's the long and short of it. All right. What else you got? All right. I have a, a slightly long, but very interesting question from Beth. Mm -hmm. um, can you develop a report that lists annual donation revenues by state? Many nonprofits must reg register with most states. Some, such as Oregon, Ohio, New York, charge their fee based on their state's donation revenue. Currently, it is a big workaround to run a donor contact list by state and then drill down on each donor's customer record to develop these lists. Is she in desktop or online, or do we not know? I if you're here, if you're here, can you can you speak up in the chat? She's in online. Okay, well that's good. Um, so yes, there is a general issue. The general issue is like if you want to get a report, and this is true in online as well and desktop as well. If you get a, if you want to get a report that gives you income, okay. Um, let me just pull up uh the report that I was just in before sales by customer summary report it's like yeah this gives me numbers and it gives me names but it doesn't say what state they're in which is where the problem is and so uh her point is well can't i get both on the same report and no and it's been like this in desktop land as well there's like the names that have the name and the address and the city and the state and the phone number and everything and that's one list and then there's the transaction but the only thread between them is the name field from the customer list. I can't add a column for state here. It sucks. Okay. And so what people do in the online edition is when you're on a transaction, now there's lots of different ways to deal with this, but my guess is for a state, you're just interested in what state they were in. So there is this thing called tags. They don't have it in desktop. They have it in QBO. Um, and what that's what I would do. I'm going to click manage tag and I'm going to add a tag for a state. I'll do one for South Carolina. And then I'll do another one for Georgia. All right. So then when you're entering a donation in the tag down here, you can put what state they're in. This is Georgia. And then I'll go to a different one. And this one is South Carolina. Okay. And then there's a tag report that you can get. So if I go to reports and I go to, where are my tag reports? I think I have to just push tag here. This is like a search field. Here's a profit and loss by tag or a trans list, transaction list by tag. So then it gives me a list of my transactions. There we go. So there's all of Georgia and there's all of South Carolina and they're also totaled. So that's what I would do. Um, if you don't use the sales receipt window and you just use the make deposit window, then things get a bit harder because there's a tag, but there's only one tag for the entire bank deposit. And if it's coming from different states, then you're going to have to enter them as separate deposits. Or you're going to have to rely on something stupid like a memo line and do a filter. Okay. Thank you, Joelle. Next question, Catherine. Okay. From Connie. How can I manually set my payroll dates? The options they give are not our actual dates and make the dates on the reports incorrect. Is she in desktop or online? Um, I'm not sure. Let's see if... Uh... Bank account is a natural category, Diane. It's just the name of the bank. I'm thinking more of P&L accounts when I'm talking about natural category. So we don't know whether she's in desktop or online? No, unfortunately, we don't know. Okay. Well, if she pops up, I'll try and answer her. What's the next question? Okay. Let's see. Um... Hmm. One quick second. Let me see. Uh, from... I can do it if you... I'm no, I'm just through. trying to sort through... Okay. Okay. Um, can you show us how to create a report that shows both the contact information of the donor and the transaction data, like the amount, the class, the account? Yeah, that's the same thing I just got finished explaining. You can't. Okay. It sucks. Okay. 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 
Travis, by the way, uh, Travis wants to know if you can merge customers and QBO if you have the same names. Absolutely, you can. Um, this is how you merge, and you this works in desktop too. It's the same way. So let's say that Matthew Bove and David Bowie were actually the same person. I don't know why I screwed the name up that bad. But what you do is you change the name of one to the name of the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit David Bowie. Well, I'll edit Matthew Bove. And I'm going to edit. And I'm going to change his name right here to the exact same name as the other name. Bowie, David. And when I click save, as long as it's the same name, you get this. Would you like to merge? Once you merge, you can unmerge and it'll merge all the transactions. That also works for the chart of accounts list. It also works for the vendor list. It also works for the class list, works for all the lists. You simply change the name of one to the name of the other. Amanda, I'm sorry, I'm just going to read a couple of these. Is it possible to include a line for a donation in a pledge invoice when, for instance, obtaining tuition money for a program? So, okay. This is interesting. So in QuickBooks Online, if when you set it up, you say, I'm a nonprofit, what it does is it changes this word invoice to pledge. So people think that you can only put donations in here. That's bull. You can have donations in here. You can have um, membership dues in here. You can have tuitions in here. No problemo. All right. Okay, go for it. What you got, Catherine? Okay. How should I record investment account balances? We have three <laughs> investment agencies we use, and we receive a monthly account statement. Our board has asked if we can record the monthly investment balances in QuickBooks instead of keeping an Excel sheet. Okay. So um, I did a uh, hour and a half long webinar on this. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do um, is pull it up so you can see uh it's not something that i can teach you quickly mm -hmm. um but i'm going to give you a little sneaky peeky and then i'll show you where you can go to um get more i did this last month and i had like 150 people in it it was actually quite cool um because i've thought a lot about this investments how many people do have investment accounts um put it in the chat um i want to see how many people actually have this because i've been thinking this has been needed forever and so um, I went ahead and did a webinar on this once for desktop users and once for online users. Uh, let's see where, uh, where is investments. Um, where's investments? I don't see it. Uh, um, books, lease, advanced, restricted. Sorry. Uh, well, I'll do it this way because this was fairly recent. Um, oh my God, I can't find it here. Let's do it this way. Investments. There it is. Okay. So, uh, what I suggest that you do is you have balance sheet accounts. You have three balance sheet accounts for each one of your investment accounts. One that's called investment cash and cash equivalents. One that's the investments at cost. And one that's the unrealized gain loss. This represents a difference between the original cost and the current value. That's what you want to have on your balance sheet. What you want to have on your P&L is this. At the bottom of the PL, so it's after net income, it's called other income. You want to have a realized earnings section and you want to have an unrealized change section. So the realized earnings has your interest in dividends, your capital gains, your realized uh, from sales, and you also subtract your investment fees there. Okay. But this webinar. Um, is at my QuickBooks Made Easy website, and it's on demand. If I just click webinars right here, I think I get to it. Um, but it's an on-demand webinar right there. And I think it's $90 or something like that to get it. Here it is for desktop users. Here it is for online users. Next question. Okay. Um, from Diane. Mm -hmm. How do you allocate administrative salaries that are supporting programs and or fundraising? 
Does mm -hmm. the whole amount go into management in general, or can you allocate some to programs and or fundraising when doing activities to support those areas? Yeah. So I have, I did a webinar on this <laughs> and I have a, a sheet and Bill, if you can remind me, I'll send this to you guys too. This is how to split payroll by function. So it is true that admin, a person who might be considered admin is doing program work. In my view, if an administrative person like an ED or an admin helper is in a program meeting, they're doing program. All right. So um, I even have here an example. I'll just kind of um, administrate related to the program. Um, let's see examples of this is only the st this is the stuff that's really, truly admin dealing with accounting issues, paying bills, budgeting, running payroll, preparing for a board meeting, not a program committee, but the overall board, dealing with your state uh, registration and license. There's really only two people who go to admin and only piece of their time goes there. Mm. The ED and whoever's doing the bookkeeping. All right. Mm. So anyway, if you remind me of that, Bill, I'll send that to you. What's okay. the next question? Let's see. Um, from Julia, how do you enter multiple deposits and then use a bank statement to reconcile? That I, I don't understand the question. Okay. Um, are they asking how to reconcile in QuickBooks? It doesn't specify if they want to reconcile within QuickBooks. They're just looking to reconcile using okay. a bank statement. And let's see if there's- Well, a yeah, well, I will. It, are they in desktop or online? Uh, let's see. Let's see. It doesn't say. All right. Let's see okay. if she says. So you go to banking. I'll do it in both. You go to banking okay. and you click reconcile. Okay. You put the ending bank balance from the statement right here. You type the statement. You put the date that you're reconciling as of. You click continue. And then you check off every time there's a transaction that cleared the bank, you look at it up here and you check it off up here and you check off everything that cleared. And then when you're done, this should be zero. And if it's not zero, you're not done. Okay. It works the same way with the online edition, although the screen looks a little bit different. Um, you go to the gear and you go to reconcile. And you put... You put the ending balance off the statement. You put the date. And you click start. And then you check off everything that cleared. I don't have anything here because I made I don't have transactions for that date, but it works the same way. So I want to make sure that we make I want to make sure that you know about a couple of things before we end. Um, and then we'll see how long we can stay on afterwards to do any more questions that you might need. But I very much want you guys, because there's a million questions here, I can tell. I want you to look at our three-day webinar series that's coming up. Um, uh, you go to QuickBooks Made Easy, you go to webinars, and you're going to see on October the 31st, the first and the second, there's a three-day webinar series. It's two and a half hours a day for three days. We take breaks. It's the same group all three days. And then we do it again the next week, November 7th, 8th, and 9th for people that are using the online edition. When you click on the box uh, from QuickBooks Made Easy, you will see all of the stuff that's covered, um, all the basics of getting around, setting up your programs, entering your budgets, dealing with Excel and QuickBooks, entering donations, grants, membership dues, programs, uh, costs, splitting them, payroll, how to enter credit card pledges, restricted grants, special fundraising costs, donor thank you letters, all of it. Okay. Now, this is normally, let me go back to my little um, PowerPoint slide here. If I can find it. I've got so many of them pulled up now. It's somewhat scary. Oh, here it is. All right, uh, let me go right here. Um, and sorry about that. Okay, this is what I wanted you to see. So quad, which is Q-U-A-D 40. Write that down right now, all caps. Instead of that three-day being 299, it's only going to be 259. 
All right. So write that down right now. Somebody put it in the chat for them, and then we'll send it to you again later. This thing is good through this Saturday night, $40 off. Yes, you get the recordings afterwards, and you can keep them forever. All right. Now, I'm going to let you decide, guys, how far you want me to go, because I'm here as long as you need me, but I realize you're on a deadline. You, you know, I can't stay on the phone too long. So it's up to you, Catherine. I do think we need to call time. Um, and, and thank you so much for this incredible session. There are an, a ton of uh, questions that we still have in here. Um, and we'll be working on uh, getting responses to those and sending them out post session. Um, so thank you, Greg, so much for all of this information and for your insights. Um, this is, it's been, I've learned a lot too in this session. I really appreciate it. Um, and also just a quick thing, we had a few questions from folks during the session about um, connecting with the quad community. And Aaron has just put that link into the chat for everyone. Um, but again, we also will be following up with that information post session. Um, so um, we would love to know just real quick before we formally wrap, was there something specific that you learned today that you wanted to highlight? We'd love to hear from y'all. Um, and if you wouldn't mind popping that in the chat, we'd be happy to to share with them. Yeah, and if you or or that you didn't learn anything. No, nope, that's also just helpful. that you're or <laughs> or that you're happy. Just something. We want to know how you're feeling. That's all we want to know. This is kind of a new thing, um, so we want to see how how it went. I mean, one thing's for sure: we could do this for five hours instead of an hour. Uh, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, you had fun. Uh, so anyway, yeah, Rochelle Bloomerang, um, I'm actually working with them. They're rewriting the uh, the sync to make it better. And I'm actually working with them on that. Um, I helped LGL write theirs. Cool. All right. Well, whenever you're ready to, to go. I love seeing, love seeing these chats come through. A lot of yeah. comments about in kind. Um, also, some very specifics about class setup. It's uh, thank you for posting, folks. I really appreciate um, hearing it, your feedback on this. Cool. Um, all right, so let me hand it uh, back over to my colleagues. I think Aaron was is here to share a little bit um, about quad. Oh, uh, you know, I just wanted to say I put my. Um calendar link in there. Uh, the recording that we'll send out also has the URLs as well. So anyone could set up a meeting with me and uh, we could talk about quad or you can go directly to the quad product page, which I also put into uh, the chat too. And you can just search at techsoup.org in the search field for quad. You can find it. Excellent. Thank cool. you. Aaron. So wonderful. So thanks again to Greg and to our behind thanks, the scenes Greg. staff really appreciate your support as we uh, went through all these questions, some fantastic questions coming in today. Yeah. Um, also, uh, oh, just a general comment, if you enjoyed the session and what you learned today um, and are interested in participating as a sponsor, we appreciate it. Um, I think, Andrew, there's a, we're going to uh, send out Susan Temby's contact information about that if uh, folks would like to pursue that opportunity. Um, and also just to clarify, I see a couple questions coming through here. Um, yes, uh, we will be sending out uh, responses to unanswered questions and also a link to the recording for today's um, session. I Can I tell you, though, Catherine, I mean, some of the questions are going to require more than just a quick answer. And that's one of the reasons why we have tech support. Um, and I do have um, I wonder if we gave you the little discount on the coupon as well. Uh, yeah, we can give you tech support for a year where you can call in and get your questions answered. We can even remote in and create appointments for you. You'll be speaking to either me, Barb, a woman named Question. Yes, her name is Question, or a woman named Paige. Um, and it's normally $4.99 for a year. It's only $2.99. It's called Quad TS299. Quad TS299. That's that code. Um so we will do our best to answer questions, but we have like 150 of them and it would take me weeks to go through all of these. And most of the time, I just can't answer. I have to ask you questions and then you ask questions to me and then we finally build an answer that works for you. It's a tech support thing. Um, just kind of letting you know. Makes complete sense. And all thank right. you for clarifying. Um, 
So thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, just the final, final comment, uh, please do fill out our post-event survey. We would love to know how this session went for you today and how we can improve and what you learned. So thank you all very much. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Take care.